I bet you have these grand plans in your mind about learning to sew and make your own clothing. But where on earth do you start? How do you actually learn how to sew? Like, where should you start? Do you get a machine first? Do you start getting patterns? What kind of fabrics? What do you do? Like, how do you put in a zip? Who knows all these things? So I know it can be so overwhelming and sewing is such an enjoyable hobby and being able to create your own clothes is I consider a life skill. So today's video I want to go over with you step by step in a sort of a process and like an order of your learning if you will to help you kind of declutter and demystify and make it a bit simpler and easier for you to follow and to be the most successful in your sewing journey. Welcome back to my channel lovely ladies and gents. My name is Evelyn Wood from evelynwood.com.au and I am the creator of VintageSewingSchool.com where I take all of my skills I've learned as a professional dressmaker and lifelong sewer specializing in vintage style and I teach new sewers just like you online how to get started and that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. Let's start at step, step zero. Just how do you actually get started? Let's walk through the process. So let's get the really sort of obvious ones out of the way first. First of all, you need to get a sewing machine and you need to get a little toolkit happening. Now, you could borrow a sewing machine, you could go out and buy something new or secondhand, and there's many different uh, sort of basic dressmaking equipment that you'll need to get started with. Now I've already made videos on both these topics in which I will link up below. Everything I talk about today I'm going to have in the description box, box below. I'm going to have listed everything I talk about. So make sure you go there for all of the links to everything we talk about today. So once you have the obvious sewing machine and all your equipment set up, the next thing you need to do is to make a little space at home where you can call your sewing space. If you're lucky enough to have a whole spare room for this, fantastic. If not, don't worry, your kitchen table will be just fine. Just make sure if you have to pack it up and pack, you know, reset it up every time you use it. Just make sure you kind of organize some space and get it all in one spot so it's easy to access. Because if it's too difficult, you're not going to do it because you'll be just loathing setting everything up or finding everything and you don't want to do that. You want it nice and easy. So set yourself up with a nice little spot, be it a permanent little area or something that you have to pack down and pack up, but make it easy to jump on your sewing machine and keep practicing. Okay, the next thing is you're going to need help. Yes, trust me. So just picking up a pattern and expecting to be able to learn to sew from one of these is an unrealistic expectation. I'm sorry, I didn't want to burst anybody's bubble there. So these paper patterns were designed in a time where there was a huge amount of assumed knowledge in dressmaking. Things that you already knew. So you can just look at the pictures and you would already know how to put the garment together. Much at the level that I'm at now, that's what I can do. But when you're learning, you can't do that. You don't know what all the terminology means. You don't know what the pictures mean. It's all gibberish. Let's be honest, it's all complete gibberish. So you need help be it either online or in person. So my advice is to seek out help from someone either in person is best of all, of course, if you have a family member or seek out your local classified ads or you may, maybe you can find some group classes that you can attend. Just find someone that you really feel comfortable with and that might be teaching you how to make things that you're interested in making. So I'll never forget when I first uh, got my sewing machine for Christmas, I was about 14, and came with some free sewing lessons. And what we got to learn how to make was, the highlight was learn how to make bike pants and a t-shirt. Yeah, bike pants. I didn't want to learn how to make bike pants. <laughs> so if you can, 
pick someone whose sort of style that you really, uh, you know, you want to want to learn how to make. It'll make it a lot more enthusiastic for you rather than trying to make something that you, you're not interested in. Or the other alternative is to find someone or lots of many people online and find an online sort of sewing mentor that you can follow along with, be it uh, online classes and schools or you know tutorials and sew alongs. So I'm going to link to a few um, people below that uh, may be of help to you that you might like, but find someone whose teaching style you like and you really kind of want to do what they're doing. It's got to be exciting. Okay, so once you've maybe located someone to help you, now you're ready to get started sewing and start basic. So obviously you're going to start with the basics of learning about your machine, how to sew fabric, what the different stitches do, and maybe make up a very simple first project that will combine all these really essential skills and just sort of help you practice it. Little bags are perfect for this. So we're talking you know, basic, basic first few lessons of sewing. Now I actually do have a free uh, class on all of these things. So it'll get you started with uh, threading your machine and your bobbin, sewing fabric and making a little 1920s bag. So the link is going to be below where you can sign up for free and get started on that class. So the next step I recommend uh, for the most success in learning how to sew is to then step up to altering and um, refashioning clothing that you already have. So why do I suggest this? I actually suggest it because a lot of the time most people haven't even looked inside a garment to see what seams look like, how they're finished, what is overlocking, what does it look like, uh, what is a facing, what, what the inside of a garment actually looks like. Most people have never taken much notice of this and have no idea what it even looks like. So starting with looking at inside of garments already and just sort of fixing things, you know, rehemming, maybe redoing a zip, sort of working up to more and more difficult things, but using garments that are already constructed shows you a lot because you get to look at the, the guts, if you will, inside of a garment and see what it looks like. And you'll get so much more familiar with what it should look like and what kind of finishes look good, what they don't, what things should look like inside and out. And of course here start with simple mending and move up to you know altering in replacing zips, doing um, all sorts of hemming, there's so many different types of hemming, refixing maybe split seams and as you get more and more confident you can build on these skills and move on to full refashioning and sort of really get your creative juices going and changing garments up completely and obviously refitting them um, to your size as well and changing up the style completely. There's kind of a little process that you can go through in, in that area of working with ready-made garments. Then once you're sort of confident at sewing and you kind of have a really good feel for what garments should actually look like in the sewing process, then I think it's time to start with patterns. So start with simple basic paper patterns. Now start with something simple. So even something with maybe elastic and maybe don't even do a zip first up, don't do anything with fancy collars or buttons, they're kind of things that you'll build up to. So again, so start simple, maybe just a little gathered skirt or a simple shift dress or a little shift blouse. Now definitely no stretchy fabrics, that comes later, but just keep it simple. And then as you get better and better at using the patterns, again, this is with your sewing instructor's help, of course, be it by following along and sew alongs or in-person lessons, or maybe you've got a uh, online, like an e-course to follow along with, but you're going to need help to learn these patterns and all the terminology and how all of the, the patterns work and go together. So start with simple things and then add more onto this. So then, you know, make sure that you learn how to do zips and elastics, make sure then you can build up and do collars, then maybe add some being able Able to do buttons and buttonholes uh, using your machine and maybe even hand sewing as well and just build along your skills and get and sort of pick a garment that's a little bit more difficult a little bit more difficult a little bit more difficult so every time you're kind of learning something new along the way there's definitely this sort of process you want to go through when you're looking at uh, making garments from scratch now in the next step 
once you have made up several, several garments from scratch using patterns and have done many refashions and alterations and now you're pretty confident sewing things together, you've sewn a broad range of skills, the next thing is to start making simple alterations to the patterns themselves. Now you can do a lot of really simple alterations using your commercial patterns. You can do things like changing the necklines and really work on uh, making alterations to the pattern so that it fits you and your body perfectly. Learning how to make these changes to the patterns. And things like changing lengths and maybe even adjusting the bodice lengths to suit your body. Things like this are really pretty simple changes that you can learn how to do very, very easily. And this is definitely the next step in adjusting uh, your garments and getting them perfect. So the next step in your sewing journey. So from here, now you're really beginning to master this sewing thing. And the last step is to really start challenging and up your skills from there. So make sure that you uh, try two things either in pattern making you can start maybe drafting patterns from scratch and learning how to do this really understanding how to grade and draft patterns and how they work so as well as drafting complete patterns from scratch and really designing from a picture and being able to then create your own uh, pattern and then garment from that is also ups upskilling on your sewing skills so make sure you, you know you can do things like bound buttonholes, welt pockets, jet pockets, uh, all sort of manner of collars and you understand the roll lines and how they work on a garment. And perhaps it's using different kinds of fabrics, like using stripes uh, in a very particular way that you know, matches, so think pattern matching, but stripes where they're all on individual angles in the pattern pieces that create the look of the garment. It can be very difficult and might be something that you want to upskill to. So make sure you're always challenging your skills from here and looking at different things that you might not have used. Maybe it's even using stretch fabrics or velvet or silky silk satin that is really quite difficult to work with. Keep challenging yourself because trust me, you never finished learning sewing. I'm not finished learning yet. I will always learn something new in how to sew. So I hope this has really sort of helped clear the kind of sewing path ahead of you, if you will, and kind of make the idea of learning how to sew less uh, overwhelming and a little bit clearer in the steps and the sort of process that you should go along to build your skills along the way. I always like to think about it as building skills. So start simple and every time you do something new, just try something new and new skill and learn something new each time and build upon those skills and you'll get to be a really great sewer in no time. And now I want to hear from you. I would love to hear in the comments below, what is the process that you've taken? Is it similar to this? Or was there one particular thing that really did help you in a uh, your process in like your sewing journey. Uh, I'd love to hear below so comment below and of course if you're new to sewing make sure you read all those comments below. It might give you some inspiration and a few little tips to yourself to help you get started. So remember everything we talked about today look in the description box below because I'm going to have links to so many things down there and of course uh, head on over to vintagesewingschool.com where I have some great free resources for you to get started in learning how to sew. Now like this video if you like it and remember to subscribe to the channel below here to make sure that you get all of the fun sewing and vintage fashion uh, related videos in the future. And now I will see you next time. Bye. I had to make notes so I didn't forget anything, but I kind of forgot to read my notes as I went along. So hopefully I didn't miss anything important that I wanted to tell you.